कृष्ण चैतन्ना प्रभो निदाधारिवाशदे And now chapter 3, Teachings to Sanatan Goswami. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Vadadhan Sri Vashati from the instructions of Lord Chaitanya to Sanatan Goswami, we can understand the science of God as it relates to God's transcendental form, His opulences, and His devotional service. Indeed, everything is being explained to Sanatan Goswami by the Lord Himself. At that time, Sanatan fell at the feet of the Lord and with great humility asked about his own real identity. I am born of a lower family, Sanatan said. My associations are all abominable and I am fallen, the most wretched of mankind. I was suffering in the dark well of material enjoyment and I never knew the actual goal of my life. Indeed, I do not even know what is beneficial for me. Although I am what is known in the world as a great learned man, I am in fact so much a fool that I myself even think that I am learned. You have accepted me as your servant, and you have delivered me from the entanglement of material life. Now please tell me what my duty is in this liberated state. By this plea we can understand that liberation is not the final word in perfection. There must be activities in liberation. Sanatan clearly says, You have saved me from the material existence. Now, after liberation, what is my duty? Sanatan further inquired, Who am I? Why are the threefold miseries always giving me trouble? And finally, tell me how I can be relieved from this material entanglement. I do not know how to question you about the advancement of spiritual life but I beg that you kindly, mercifully, let me know everything that I need to know. This is the process of accepting a spiritual master. One should approach a spiritual master, humbly submit to him, and then inquire from him about one's spiritual progress. The Lord was pleased by Sanatan's submissive behavior, and he replied, You have already received benediction from Lord Krishna, and therefore you know everything and are free from all the miseries of material existence. The Lord further pointed out that because Sanatan was in Krishna consciousness, he was naturally, by the grace of Krishna, already conversant with everything. Because you are a humble devotee, the Lord continued, you are asking me to confirm what you already know. This is very nice. These are the characteristics of a true devotee. In the Narada Bhakti Sutra, it is said that one who is very serious about developing Krishna consciousness has his desire to understand Krishna fulfilled very soon by the grace of the Lord. You are a suitable person to protect the devotional service of the Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued. 
Therefore, it is my duty to instruct you in the science of God, and I will explain everything to you step by step. It is the duty of a disciple approaching a spiritual master to inquire about his constitutional position. In conformity to that spiritual process, Sanatan has already asked, What am I, and why am I suffering from the threefold miseries? The threefold miseries are called Adhyatmika, Adhibodhika, and Adhidaivaka. The word Adhyatmika refers to those miseries caused by the mind and body. Sometimes the living entity suffers bodily, and sometimes he is distressed mentally. Both are Adhyatmika miseries. We experience these miseries even in the womb of our mother. As we well know, there are many types of miseries that take advantage of the delicate human body and give us pain. Miseries inflicted by other living entities are called Adhibodhika. These living entities need not even be large, for there are many, such as bugs, that can make us miserable even while we are sleeping in bed. There are many insignificant living entities, like cockroaches, that sometimes give us pain, and there are also other living entities who are born on different kinds of planets and who give us miseries. As far as the Adhidaivaka miseries are concerned, these are natural disasters that originate with the demigods of the higher planets. For instance, we sometimes suffer from severe cold or hot weather, from a thunderbolt, or from earthquakes, tornadoes, droughts, and many natural disasters. In any case, we are always suffering from either one or a combination of these three kinds of miseries. Sanatan's inquiry was therefore an intelligent one. What is the position of the living entities, he asked? Why are they always undergoing these three kinds of miseries? Sanatan had admitted his weakness. Although he was known by the masses of people as a greatly learned man, and actually he was a highly learned Sanskrit scholar, and although he accepted this designation, he did not actually know what his constitutional position really was and just why he was subjected to the threefold miseries. Approaching a spiritual master is not a fashion, but is a necessity for one who is seriously conscious of the material miseries and who wants to be free of them. It is the duty of such a person to approach a spiritual master. In this regard, we should note similar circumstances in Bhagavad Gita. When Arjuna was perplexed by so many problems involving whether to fight or not, he accepted Lord Krishna as his spiritual master. It was also a case of the supreme spiritual master instructing Arjuna about the constitutional position of the living entity. In Bhagavad Gita, we are informed that the constitutional nature of the individual entity is spirit soul. He is not matter. As spirit soul, he is part and parcel of the supreme soul, the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. We also learn that it is the duty of the spirit soul to surrender, for only then can he be happy. The last instruction of Bhagavad Gita is that the spirit soul surrender completely unto the supreme soul, Krishna, and in that way realize happiness. Here also Lord Chaitanya, answering the questions of Sanatan, repeats the same truth. There is a difference, however. Here, Lord Chaitanya does not give the information about the spirit soul that is already described in Bhagavad Gita. Rather, he begins from the point where Krishna ended his instruction. It is accepted by great devotees that Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself. And from this point of view, he begins his instruction to Sanatan from the point where he ended his instructions to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. Your constitutional position is that you are pure living soul, the Lord told Sanatan. This material body cannot be identified with your real self. 
nor is your mind your real identity, nor your intelligence, nor false ego. Your identity is that of eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Your position is that you are transcendental. The superior energy of Krishna is spiritual in constitution, and the inferior external energy is material. Since you are between the material energy and the spiritual energy, your position is marginal. Belonging to the marginal potency of Krishna, you are simultaneously one with and different from Krishna. Because you are spirit, you are not different from Krishna. And because you are only a minute particle of Krishna, you are different from him. This simultaneous oneness and difference always exists in the relationship between the living entities and the Supreme Lord. From the marginal position of the living entities, this conception of simultaneously one and different can be understood. The living entity is just like a molecular particle of sunshine, whereas Krishna may be compared to the blazing, shining sun itself. Lord Chaitanya compared the living entities to blazing sparks from a fire and the Supreme Lord to the blazing fire of the sun. In this connection, the Lord cites a verse from Vishnu Purana, Canto 1, Chapter 22, Verse 52. Eka desha sitas yagner, jyotsna vistarani yata, parasya brahmana shaktis, Tetedam akilam jagat, which means, quote, everything that is manifested within this cosmic world is but the energy of the Supreme Lord, as fire emanating from one place diffuses its illumination and heat all around. So the Lord, although situated in one place in the spiritual world, manifests his different energies everywhere. Indeed, the whole cosmic creation is composed of different manifestations of his energy." Unquote. The energy of the Supreme Lord is transcendental and spiritual, and the living entities are part and parcel of that energy. There is another energy, however, called material energy, which is covered by the cloud of ignorance. This energy, which is material nature, is divided into three modes or gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Lord Chaitanya quoted from Vishnu Purana, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Verse 2, to the effect that all inconceivable energies reside in the Supreme Personality of the Lord, and that the whole cosmic manifestation acts due to the Lord's inconceivable energy. The Lord also said that the living entities are known as Kshetragya, or knowers of the field of activities. In the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the body is described as the field of activities, and the living entity as Kshetragya, the knower of that field. Although the living entity is constitutionally conversant with spiritual energy, or has the potency to understand spiritual energy, he is covered by the material energy and consequently identifies the body with the self. This false identification is called false ego. Deluded by this false ego, the bewildered living entity in material existence changes his different bodies and suffers various kinds of miseries. Knowledge of the living entity's true position is possessed to different extents by different types of living entities. In other words, it is to be understood that the living entity is part and parcel of the spiritual energy of the Supreme Lord. 
Because the material energy is inferior, man has the ability to get uncovered from this material energy and utilize the spiritual energy. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that the superior energy is covered by the inferior energy. Due to this covering, the living entity is subjected to the miseries of the material world, and in proportion to the different degrees of passion and ignorance, he suffers material miseries. Those who are a little enlightened suffer less, but on the whole, everyone is subjected to material miseries due to being covered by the material energy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also quoted from the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita in which it is stated that earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence and ego all combine together to form the inferior energy of the Supreme Lord. The superior energy, however, is the real identity of the living being and it is because of that energy that the whole material world functions. The cosmic manifestation, which is made of material elements, has no power to act unless it is moved by the superior energy, the living entity. It can actually be said that the conditioned life of the living entity is due to forgetfulness of his relationship with the Supreme Lord in the superior energy. When that relationship is forgotten, conditional life is the result. Only when man revives his real identity, that of eternal servitor to the Lord, does he become liberated.